Hello, Flickering Myth family and all you fall guys out there. My name is EJ and welcome to our channel. In this video, I am discussing the latest big blockbuster, actually the movie to kick off the 2024 summer movie season. We are talking about The Fall Guy. Blockbusters in 2024 have been quite interesting. Either they're super popcorn wild movies like something like Godzilla x Kong The New Empire or you have something very serious, very heady like Dune Part 2. The Fall Guy falls perfectly in the middle. This movie is a love letter to everything Hollywood, to everything filmmaking, especially the stunt community. It's very smart in that way. But on the opposite end, it is just cheesy good old fun where it's just over the top explosions, big set pieces, and some fun acting. I will say one of my only big gripes of it, actually the biggest problem I have is, sometimes it feels like it's too much of a good thing. This movie is about 15-20 minutes far too long. There is scenes in the middle I would have chopped out that feel like they serve nothing to the actual plot. I think sometimes this movie wants to be a bit too funny and it wants to be a bit too much of a romance film. Those things clash with the fun action kind of thriller that we have in the middle of it. This movie is trying to handle a lot of things. It wants to, like I said, homage the world of Hollywood. It wants to call back to The Fall Guy, a very popular 80s series, but it also wants to do its own thing with a love story. It wants to have the mystery kind of drama element to it. It is far too much. And it's, again, it's not a bad movie. I think what they're trying to do, what they attempt to do, is for the most part pretty good. It just doesn't fully connect with me. By the end, I was left kind of whelmed. There's a, a saying from the movie, 10 things I hate about you. I know you can be overwhelmed and you can be underwhelmed, but can you ever just be whelmed? And that's how I was left walking out of this movie. The Fall Guy has Ryan Gosling at the center of the film. We all love him from last year's Barbie. That's why I'm wearing my Barbie shirt. But he is back with a brand new leading man role. I've been waiting for Ryan Gosling to get a role like this for quite some time. He had the nice guys a couple years ago. Obviously, we know him from The Notebook. He's been in countless films. But Ryan Gosling as the centerpiece, as the main selling point for a movie, we don't get that often enough. And he does great as Colt. I love his stuntman persona. I love love what he does in this movie. He's still a little ditzy fun that we saw in the Barbie movie, but he's also a, a kind of a, a, a romantic leading man. He has this this movie star quality. I didn't think Ryan Gosling could bring this like this true old school movie star persona, but that's what he does here. So we're seeing Colt in the in the stunt world, he actually has a very big accident that kicks off the movie that sends his career into a bit of a, a spiral. So when he gets the opportunity to work with a director, a director who he actually has feelings for, named Jody, played by Emily Blunt, he jumps on the opportunity, gets thrown into Australia. I've seen a lot of movies set in Australia recently. Those tax rebates must be really good over there. But yes, he goes over to Australia, but this leads him into a plot where he is dealing with a murder and then he's getting framed and what does he have to do and how does he get himself out of the situation? It's definitely a pretty bland, predictable plot. Th everything that happens, you're like, oh, well, that person's going to be, oh, well, that person. It's so kind of straightforward and I do appreciate that because they're trying to do a lot because as straightforward as the love plot was, we also have the, the uh, oh, sorry, the, the main plot with the, the murder and all that. We have the love plot that they're trying to do. We have a little bit of the Hollywood stuff that really does take some time to you know really uh, there there's moments where it really wants to do love letters to Hollywood and I love it especially between Colt and Dan Winston Duke's character where they're kind of quoting movies to each other I loved moments like that I thought that's where the movie really shined as a f like pure homage to all things Hollywood all things stunts that's where the movie really shines but when they try to do the love plot when they're trying to do a mystery thriller element all of those things kind of get lost in the shuffle I wanted more of moments like there's one one specific fight scene where right before everything goes crazy, you see Gosselin's character, you see Colt go and get the get the house ready for an attack. He goes, oh, I'm going to put this here, the here, and here. And it's like a perfect setup of what a stuntman would do. I wanted that throughout the whole movie. Like, there would be times where I'm like, oh, I know what you guys are doing. This is like a big set piece. But those little smaller moments, that's where this movie really shines. Again, seeing him set up stunts, seeing him kind of brace himself, use his experience as a stuntman to fight 
that's exactly what I wanted more of this movie. Like, it seems like that shouldn't be hard to ask for, that that's such a an easy thing, and it works when it works, but there's just not enough of it. And this movie is good, but it could have been better by just little tweaks to really make me fall in love with the stunt world, Hollywood, and Ryan Gosling's character, Colt, because sometimes he's a little insufferable, and sometimes just the movie doesn't, it, it doesn't grab you as it should. Something I really appreciate about this movie is the actors that they spotlight. I love Ryan Gosling. I think he has, again, worked very hard for the spot. Emily Blunt, there's a scene where she gets to kick some ass, actually, and I'm like, ooh, Emily Blunt, action star. Maybe you would have been a good, you know, Sue Storm in the ex- in the Fantastic Four movies. You, you could have been there. Maybe, who knows? The John Karinsky hiring, that could have been too much. But I also loved Aaron Taylor Johnson. Maybe not my one of my personal favorites at times, but he plays his role very well. Winston Duke, great. Hannah Winningham, I had no idea that's who that was. Like, she's giving me Tilda Swinton. You throw on a different wig, a different hair color, from Game of Thrones to Ted Lasso to this movie. She is such a transformative actress. And Stephanie Sue is here. You know, her from Everything Everywhere All at Once. She's here. She's like two seconds in the movie, and I'm like, oh yeah, I love her. And then she's gone. So the movie the movie definitely has really good moments, but also, again, doesn't use the characters, doesn't use the moments that I think are the best. This movie almost gets in, it gets in the way of itself, because again, I want to like Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt, and I think they were really good when they are working back and forth with each other, and then it feels like everything pauses to do the love stuff, and then both their characters kind of become insufferable. There's moments where I love, like I said, the Winston Duke, you know, his character Dan and Colt's relationship as bros, the stunt coordinator and the stunt man. I wanted more of those two together. There's Again, there's moments that they, they are there, and they're so good, so it makes you crave it. So when it's not there, when you're having to deal with stuff that you don't really want to deal with, you go, but what about that? But what about that? That was good. That was good. Where is it? This movie, it's not bad. It, it, I definitely don't want to seem like I'm being too harsh on it, but I just think I could have seen this movie go further, go even crazier, go even wilder, and it could have worked. I will say asterisk to all of this. I saw this in a press screening that had an open screening, so everyone was kind of able to go, just it was critics, and it was also just audience members, and the audience clapped at the end of this movie. They loved it. So it definitely seems like this movie has found a home, and I hope it does well. This summer, you know, box office needs it, but for me, this movie is almost wasted potential. It's good, but it just gets in the way of itself a little too many times. So that is my feelings on The Fall Guy. Overall, it's a good movie, not something I would watch again. Something that I feel like with a couple small tweaks could have made it an absolute classic. I've been craving a good, good old school comedy. But there's too many subgenres that we try to dip into that takes away from the good old comedy, the good old stunt action loving stuff. That is just, that's what I wanted. It's not there. But overall, a fine movie. I think it's definitely worth the watch. Are you guys interested in seeing The Fall Guy? Have you seen it yet? Let me know down in the comments below. Subscribe to Flickering Myth because we make videos like this every single week. And give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy. All right, everyone, let's talk about The Fall Guy right down there.